good Wednesday morning and welcome to this science update at GuyMcPherson.com where you can find Nature Bites Last. Today I'm going to talk about a paper that came out in the Philadelphia Inquirer, an article that came out on last Thursday, Earth Day, and it's titled, It's Time to Talk About Earth's Unsustainable Population Growth. Huh. I think the time to talk about Earth's unsustainable population growth was about 150 or 250 years ago. I think the time to take action was maybe a century ago. And now any talk about Earth's unsustainable population growth, and here of course it's referring to human population growth, because if it's not mentioned then it has to be about humans. The time to talk about it now, that's all we can do is talk now. The paper correctly refers to educating girls and women as being the key to plateau or reduce the human population. However, it doesn't point out how far down this road we are. It does correctly point out that from the paper itself, one of the founders of Earth Day back in 1970 was Gaylord Nelson. He pointed out that stopping unsustainable population growth was the key to protecting the environment. He had the foresight to realize that continued growth, no matter how well managed, is inherently unsustainable and will engender greater hardships and inequities, especially to those most vulnerable. Since that first Earth Day, the U.S. population has soared from 203 million to 330 million, and the global population has doubled to practically 8 billion people. So we have a problem here, and it's too many people on too finite a planet. Or, as Paul Ehrlich wrote for the Mob blog a few months ago, too many rich people. That was the title of his relatively short essay. And that's the whole story. It's not that we have too many people. The planet could probably support mm, almost as many as we have now if they were incredibly poor and didn't exert much influence on environmental processes. But too many rich people like those from the United States and Japan and Western Europe and the so-called first world, that's what got brought us to the brink. That's what brings us this mess that we're in right now. And this has been pointed out by most notably Paul and Anne Ehrlich in their 1968 book, The Population Bomb. Anne was, of course, uncredited with authorship because what could a woman possibly know? about the human population back in 1968. There was also Professor Garrett Hardin, also in the University of California system for many years, who was pointing out the hazards associated with continuing to grow the human population. But, of course, nobody paid attention, and I must point out that evolution by natural selection has made species successful that is long-lived and able to control their environment in cases, only in those cases, in which the species was able to continually reproduce and grow in size. Ultimately, of course, that leads to disaster, as any experiment with a petri dish and bacteria will show, and as a, the ongoing experiment with too many humans on too fight at night a planet is already illustrating. Biosphere 2, the bubble in which eight biospherians lived for two years, the Biosphere 2 is located just outside of Tucson, Arizona, in Oracle, Arizona, and it indicated that even with infinite fossil fuels, because that's what they had in that case, was the ability to access fossil fuels indefinitely throughout the term of the experiment. Even in that case of infinite access to fossil fuels, the human carrying capacity of Earth with fossil fuels is six to eight billion people. We're at eight billion. That's too many, and we don't have infinite access to fossil fuels. They're already declining, 
As pointed out by several articles and books on the topic, we have reached the peak for oil and coal and almost everything else that matters to sustaining this set of living arrangements, what we call industrial civilization. So, I'm not sure what the point is of this article in the Philadelphia Inquirer, it's time to talk about Earth's unsustainable population growth. I think the time, time to take action was a very long time ago. And here we are, realizing and experiencing the adverse consequences of too much consumption on a finite planet. Thanks for staying tuned. We'll try to produce another one of these science updates in about a week. Thank you.